Hello and welcome. With this problem, uh, this problem comes from chapter 14 of MainQ's 8th edition macroeconomics. Um, that chapter is the aggregate supply and the trade-off between inflation and supply chapter. Um, if you're using a different edition, that, that chapter might not be chapter 14. Uh, anyway, so aggregate supply, of course, reflects how much firms are willing to produce at different price levels. Uh, at higher prices, they're willing to produce a bit more. At lower prices, they're willing to produce a bit less. Um, although the intuition can get you know, a bit nuanced with aggregate supply, you should at least follow the basic intuition of, as a firm that sells goods, you're willing to produce and sell more goods uh, at higher prices. So thus, if your goods are going for higher prices, then as a firm, you're willing to make the investment into capital and to purchase the extra labor required to achieve that higher production. Um, and then it works similarly for lower prices. Um, since we're dealing with, uh, in this problem, since we're dealing with uh, inflation and unemployment trade-offs, it's quite natural to start off with this Phillips curve, which uh, this is the Phillips curve for the problem. Um, the curve charts the relationship between inflation and unemployment. Although this is probably, you know, not a hard and fast uh, relationship that always holds up, uh, it's quite a good guide for thinking about the macroeconomy. So the Phillips curve equation that we're going to deal with um, is one that's kind of common to intermediate econ courses, intermediate macro econ courses. Uh, it says that today's inflation, uh, so pi here, uh, is a function of expected inflation, which we're just going to say is yesterday's inflation and the deviation between current unemployment uh, and the natural rate of unemployment. So that's the difference between today's unemployment level and the hypothetical level of unemployment that leads to no inflation. So this problem is going to give us like a policy goal. You know, we're going to try to decrease inflation by 5%. Uh, and then we will see, um, use what we've learned in the class so far to see what we can expect uh, that goal will, you know, have an effect on the rest of the economy. Uh, we'll also discuss, you know, the Phillips curve in the short run and the long run. We'll bring up Oaken's law. Uh, Oaken's law relates GDP changes to uh, unemployment rate, and then we'll discuss the sacrifice ratio. So anyway, let's get started with the problem. So part A asks, uh, given this Phillips curve equation, what is the natural rate of unemployment? Um, well, we find the natural rate of unemployment first off just by setting. Um, the change of inflation equal to zero. So we want um, inflation going from one period to the next period. So from period T minus one to period T uh, equal to zero. So we're going to find out the unemployment rate here such that um, inflation, you know, in one period is equal to inflation in the next period equal to expected inflation. So that's what we're going to do with this step here. So we're setting it so that the change in inflation, the difference between today's inflation and yesterday's inflation is equal to zero. Uh, and then using the Phillips curve, what happens to the rest of the equation? So we have zero is equal to the leftover stuff. So negative one half times the current unemployment rate minus this 0 0.06. Uh, simplifying things a bit, you know, getting rid of the, the left-hand side stuff, we have zero is equal to all this stuff. Um, you know, zero divided by negative zero uh, 0.5 is just 0. So this side is still 0. If we divide both sides by negative 1 half, we still have 0 is equal to what's left in the parentheses. So we're just dividing uh, this whole thing right here. The negative 0 0.5 up here and the negative 0 0.5 just goes down to 0. And you're left with uh, 0 is equal to the current unemployment rate minus that 0 0.06. Uh, and then simplifying things a bit, we get the unemployment rate, uh, you know, in this situation, which is the natural rate of unemployment is our 0 0.06. So the natural rate of unemployment, you know, in part A, given this uh, particular uh, Phillips curve equation is just 6%. And once again, all we did to, to do that is we made sure that, uh, or we set that, uh, we set these inflation uh, equal to each other one period to the next. So change in inflation is zero, you know, so the difference between today's inflation and yesterday's inflation, we just set to zero. That's what we did in this step. Uh, and then after that, we just grind it out to find out what the current unemployment rate is. So what is this unemployment rate? And that's gonna give us our natural rate of unemployment. Part B here asks us to graph the short and long run relationships between inflation and unemployment. Well, in the long run, we just found that the natural rate of unemployment is that 0 0.06, just 0%. Um, and in the long run, that's gonna be the case whether inflation's high or whether inflation's low. 
So the long run Phillips curve is just this vertical line coming out of the natural rate of unemployment. So you have the long run Phillips curve, which is always going to be equal to the natural rate of unemployment, 0 0.06, no matter what the inflation level is. Uh, however, in the short one, you know, we can expect some prices or inflation to be some, somewhat sensitive to changes in unemployment. So our short run Phillips curve is this downward sloping curve here. Uh, we know that when inflation is equal to expected inflation, so here that's when current inflation is equal to yesterday's period inflation. Uh, when you know inflation is equal to last period's inflation, we just found that uh, unemployment is going to be this natural rate of unemployment. So we have to make sure that uh, this level of inflation, you know, last period's inflation, is going to be set equal to uh, intersects the short run Phillips curve exactly where um, the natural rate of unemployment is. Because as we just found in part A, if the current inflation rate is pi sub t minus 1, then we know that the unemployment rate is going to be 0 0.06. So that's kind of one little thing that ties down our short-run Phillips curve. Um, we know that if the unemployment rate is below the natural rate, um, so anywhere in this area right here, our Phillips curve tells us that inflation is going to be a bit higher. And then um, if the unemployment rate's above that natural rate of unemployment, the short run Phillips curve should tell us that inflation rate is going to be a bit lower. And then the exact relationship, you know, in our short run Phillips curve, the exact relationship between unemployment and inflation is given by the slope of the Phillips curve. So that's negative 0.5. So the slope of this line in the short run Phillips curve is 0.05. So, you know, for every uh, one movement over this way, we get a negative half movement down. So every 1% increase in unemployment, we get a negative half percent decrease in the inflation rate. Now, part C here asks uh, how much cyclical unemployment is necessary to reduce inflation by 5 percentage points. Uh, and then the next part of that problem is use Oaken's law to compute the sacrifice ratio. Um, so starting off here uh, with our, you know, the Phillips curve we were given in the problem given to us, uh, what we want to do is decrease um, inflation by um, 5 percent, right? So we want the change in inflation, today's inflation minus yesterday's inflation, we want that to be equal to um, negative 0 0.05. So that's what I've done in this step right here. So we want to decrease inflation by five percentage points. So we want pi minus pi sub t minus one equal to this amount here. Um, so now we need to figure out, well, what's the unemployment rate that will give us that negative 0.05 change in inflation? So now what we have to do is take this portion of the Phillips curve and then just solve for u, right? Um, the Phillips curve tells us how, you know, in this situation, how changes in inflation uh, relate to unemployment rate. So we have the change in inflation we want to achieve, and now we can just calculate the unemployment rate we need to get this negative 0.05% reduction in the inflation rate. So going through the steps, you know, just churning it out. Uh, the first step here I've done is uh, I've divided both sides by negative 0.5, right? Because I want to I want to get u by itself. So the first step is just uh, negative 0.05 divided by negative one half. Uh, it's going to be equal to what's left in the parentheses over here. Um, negative 0.05 divided by negative 0.5 is just 0.1, you know, one tenth. Uh, so one tenth is equal to what's left over with the parentheses. And then just solving for u, simple arithmetic, you get uh, we require a um, unemplo the unemployment rate to be uh, 0 0.16, so 16 percent. If you remember, the natural rate of unemployment was 6 percent. And if we want inflation to go down by 5%, that means we need to increase the unemployment rate by 10 percentage points. If this were a real world economy, that would be a huge increase in unemployment. That would be like a really big recession. But that's beside the point. We, they asked us our goal of, uh, you know, let's reduce inflation by high percentage points. What did we have to get unemployment rates uh, to in order to achieve that goal? This is the answer. Unemployment rate needs to be 16% in order to get inflation down by 5%. Cool. So that's the first part of the question. Uh, now the second part here asks, use Oaken's law to compute the sacrifice ratio. So there's two ideas that hopefully you remember, maybe you don't. Um, if you don't remember, uh, what's Oaken's law? Well, Oaken's law just says that for every 1% um, increase in the unemployment rate, GDP will have to be about 2% below 
potential GDP. So Oaken's Law gives us a way to relate this change, you know, we're, we're changing the unemployment rate, um, to what the change in GDP is going to be. So remember, we want, um, you know, in order to get a 1% decrease in inflation, our Phillips curve and Oaken's Law tells us that GDP will ha need to drop by 5 percentage points. So that's seems like a pretty big sacrifice ratio, but that's beside the point. You know, we just kind of followed through our simple model to figure out this sacrifice ratio. And then part D asks, um, you know, give two scenarios that will achieve this goal. Um, well, I feel there's kind of two parts to this question. So one is like the how, uh, you know, like fiscal policy, monetary policy uh, type question, you know, what, what could that government actually do? So, you know, suppose you could do some sort of like funding, you could cut funding tax incentives or subsidies, you could uh, get the government to fire a bunch of employees, um, you know, the Fed could adjust the borrowing rates, um, you know, those sorts of things to uh, increase unemployment rates and reduce the GDP. But I think what this question is getting at is kind of the second part. It's, um, you know, the main policy goal that to, in order to reduce inflation by 5%, we had to up the unemployment rate quite a bit. So how do you do that? You know, we want the goal is to uh, get an unemployment rate um, to increase it by 10%. So, you know, do we do that all at once? Do we do it over 10 years? So one scenario might be to have high unemployment for a very short period of time, kind of like a sharp, severe recession. Um, so, for example, just one year of 16% uh, unemployment. But you could also, you know, just kind of spread that out over 10 years uh, and spread it over 10 years where you have, you know, um, each of those 10 years has the unemployment rate uh, going up by 1% above the natural rate of unemployment. So you have 10 years of, I guess that would be 7% unemployment. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the two approaches to that problem I figure there is. So one is, uh, you know, mechanically, me methodologically, what do you do? Uh, and then the second one would be, uh, you know, how do you distribute that through time? Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry for running a little long. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.